Lads Corla, never has it taken so long for government ministers to say so little of significance. The budget the ministers outline has a wider context than this budget. International events and economic forces beyond their control. But there's another context for this budget, a context that they are responsible for. This is the years of government failing to address the biggest issues that people are facing. One of the ministers said earlier, these policies did not happen by accident. And they are absolutely right. Their policies have constructed the crisis in housing and in health and many other areas. The cost of living pressures have become entrenched. They have had 13 long years, yet they have failed to deliver for ordinary workers and families. People are suffering the brunt of the inadequate investment in housing, in health, in essential services and in vital infrastructure. While this budget may help some, it will not bring the change that people are demanding. The word continue was used over and over and over again. This is yet another backslapping budget from the government. Fair play to ourselves. There are two tiers to this economy. Macroeconomic headlines mean nothing to people who are struggling to keep their heads above water. Today, as we sit around this chamber, there are 785,000 people living below the poverty line. After housing costs, one in five people are existing, not living in poverty. They include renters, lone parents and children and adults with disabilities. Almost half of all renters are at risk of poverty. One out of every two lone parents are at risk of poverty. 14% are living in consistent poverty. Half of all people living with a disability are at risk of poverty. This state has the lowest employment rate of people with a disability in Europe. Why? Because the barriers to employment for people with disabilities have never, ever been tackled. This government are economically short-sighted. They have failed on the biggest challenges we face in housing, health and cost of living. Not only have a generation been forced into a life of renting, this government has turned the state itself into a renter. Private companies are being given more and more control of our public services. Outsourcing private consultants and leasing contracts are siphoning off vast amounts of public money. Private companies will now own 90% of all primary care centres, with the state just being a tenant. We're paying 20 million a year in rent. It costs more in the long run, and the site and the building will never ever be owned by the state, and leaves future health budgets in the hands of developers and landlords. They are doing the same thing in third level education, controversial public-private public partnerships for technological universities, developer-led with the government paying for 25 years for the right to use the building. The European Court of Auditors criticised this as bad value for money, but the government chooses to ignore these warnings, pushing ahead despite the long-term impact on public finances. There are 40,000 civil servants, 900,000 square metres of office space. The government chooses to rent 40% of this office space. This is despite a government report stating that it is 30 to 40% cheaper to buy office space, and still they choose to continue to rent. Why are we expanding in all these areas when we have the money to do things properly? This is an obvious step that the government could take to reduce costs in the medium term. We need a government that thinks and plans beyond the annual budget. Huge costs are associated with the failure to deliver social and affordable housing. I'm reminded of Minister Donoghue's first, visit, uh, first budget speech. It came in 2016, after five years of Fine Gael in government. Since then, obviously, we've had seven more years of Fine Gael and seven more budget speeches. Addressing this chamber that day, he said, housing was a core priority a core priority. He went on to say that 47,000 new social housing units will be delivered by 2021. The truth is housing has never been a Fine Gael priority and we see from today's budget it is still not a priority. Yeah. We know that because only a small fraction of those houses were ever delivered. Had they kept their word, people wouldn't be locked out of home ownership 
rents wouldn't have skyrocketed. The number of people homeless wouldn't have doubled. As we sit here today, looking at all of the seats in this chamber, we should remember the number of children without a place to call home today or tonight could fill this chamber 25 times over. And you say that this country is one of the best places on earth to be a child. Well, tell that to those children. And that doesn't even count those that are crammed into rooms with relatives. Could you imagine what it's like to be the parents of those children? More than twice the number of children homeless today than when that budget speech was given. More than twice as many as when we were told that housing was a, pri was a priority for Fine Gael. Hundreds of thousands of other lives have been put on hold. Two out of three people under 30 are living with their parents. It's hard to believe in a country as rich as ours that there are five, 522,000 adults living with their parents, up substantially since 2016, and one of the highest rates in Europe. Most of them are in, on, in employment, but a job no longer means you can afford somewhere to live, somewhere to start a family. This budget tells me that this government cannot and will not get to grips with the housing crisis. There is no increase in their targets, and their targets are universally seen as too low. Sinn Féin would deliver 21,000 social and affordable homes. There is a scale of investment that is needed, the sense of urgency that is needed. We have seen the opportunity to make lasting difference in people's lives by addressing housing. People need a government that is willing to stand up for them. Ending the housing crisis is Sinn Féin's number one priority. Then we look at health. You've not only seen a deepening crisis in housing, you have overseen a deepening crisis in health. In Minister Donoghue's same speech in 2016, he said health was also a core priority. As of this summer, there are more than 880,000 patients on hospital waiting lists, almost a million people. That is double the number in 2016, when health became a Fine Gael core priority. How can anyone trust this government to deliver? Hospitals are operating at dangerously unsafe levels. They broke a new record, as Pierre said, on Tuesday the 3rd of January 2023, with 931 patients left on trolleys. It is heartbreaking to see average waiting times in some hospitals reaching over 27 hours. I struggle to imagine the hardship and the turmoil that must cause patients, families and the staff. In a letter to government this week, 78 Donegal GPs wrote, we cannot continue to sit back and watch our patients wait for hours in ambulances at the door of emergency departments or on hard chairs waiting for treatments. That is what you have done. Is it any wonder that 9,000 people every month leave emergency departments without even being seen? Again, more than twice as many than in 2016, leaving without emergency care. Staff are at breaking point as conditions continue to deteriorate. And it's not just in our hospitals. The failure of successive Fine Gael governments and Fianna Fáil governments permeates deep into community health care. Dental care for the least well-off in our society is collapsing. Access to timely GP is no longer guaranteed in many communities. There's a severe lack of community beds. Nursing homes are struggling to stay open. The lack of investment in mental health has destroyed lives and wrecked families. Nowhere is the change more badly needed. For too long under Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, our health service has lurched from crisis to crisis. Patients and healthcare staff deserve better. You've brought forward a budget with essentially no new measures. 100 million in a budget the size, the size of health will have no impact whatsoever. When I listened to the minister's speeches, I thought, this government has thrown in the towel on health. Sinn Féin would invest in health services. We've seen the alarming rise of poverty amongst older people and people with disabilities. One of the burdens is the cost of health care and medicine. Sinn Féin would reduce the maximum monthly drugs payment to 50 euro, abolishing prescription charges and extending medical cards to 400,000 additional people. 
This would take some pressure off people and be a step in the right direction to universal health care. Every year under Fine Gael, people have to travel further and wait longer to access health care. Sinn Féin has a multi-year plan to fix the health service, starting with 1.3 billion euro investment in capacity, in workforce planning and in cutting the cost of health care. People with, living with disabilities and parents of children with disabilities have been let down again by this government over and over again, who continue to deny their basic human rights. They have to fight each and every day for access to the very most basic services. The Disability Action Plan agreed in July of this year is already in jeopardy. The 55 million outlined in the budget goes nowhere near far enough to make that plan viable. And I'm really mindful here today that there are parents of children who have been impacted by val sodium valparite val val and they are still waiting for a pathway to care. These children have been harmed and they still don't have the pathway to care that they, needed, that they need. It's unacceptable that government has failed to provide adequate and appropriate residential care, that so many people remain in unsuitable congregated settings. Why are there young people with disabilities living in nursing homes? Elderly parents of children with disabilities need to know that there is an agreed care plan for their children. Government is failing to provide enough adult day services, respite services and home care packages, pushing careers pushing carers to breaking point and leaving them in financial stress. Sinn Féin would invest over €140 million Euro to deliver the Disability Action Plan. We need to ensure that people with disabilities are not further harmed by the cost of living crisis. The fact is that people are already in arrears and don't have enough to make it through the winter. Sinn Féin recognises that we are in a cost of living crisis, a crisis that is deep rooted, that cannot be fixed with one off measures alone. Not to have to wait until budget day to know how difficult the winter is going to be. Every year a Christmas bonus is announced as if it's some type of a gift. People who rely on state pensions, disability payments or any other payments deserve certainty. Many are still struggling to get by. But well, that's why Sinn Féin set out a proposal to invest 1.7 billion in social protection. We would increase child benefit. Sinn Féin would really address child poverty. Poverty among retired people has also been increasing in recent years. This is an alarming trend. An increase in pensions alone will not tackle the consistent poverty faced by some. More targeted increases to the living alone allowance and to the fuel allowance is required. This must also be combined with a plan to ensure older people have secure housing. Sinn Féin would also target greater support to children and families. The, one, the seven million allocated by the government for capitation for schools is shocking. Schools are struggling with increased costs. This will continue to push the cost on to parents, even, even the, through the, the, though the, the so-called voluntary contributions. There is nothing here on student accommodation. There are thousands of student beds that could be unlocked as if they, were, if, if they were serious about addressing the annual crisis in student accommodation. That's why we allocated in the alternative budget 100 million capital to unlock, unlock all of those projects. The Students' Union told you last, last week that uh, accommodation hasn't been provided. This 100 million is good for students and for parents and would take the pressure off the private rental market. Finally, the government has been persuaded and pushed into acting on childcare. Despite the government commitment, parents will be forced to wait until September 2024 to see any reduction in their fees. Since 2017, our spokesperson on children, Kathleen Funchen, has fought hard to convince the government of the need and the importance of investing in childcare. Now we urgently request that they address the issues for smaller providers, particularly those with the ECCE model. The wage talks must continue and workers in the childcare sector must have their qualifications and professionalism recognised. People, particularly women, are being pushed out of the workplace by unaffordable childcare. We have labour shortages and desperately need, need affordable childcare. Sinn Féin recognises that the cause and effects of climate change are not equally shared. The wealthiest 10% of the population emits nearly, much, nearly as much as the bottom 50%. At the heart of any green transition must be fairness. 
The only way we are going to deal with the climate emergency is through transformational and brave leadership, empowering households and communities and various sectors of the economy to take collective action. The allocation of windfall cooperation tax into the green infrastructure fund that may not be accessible next year raises the questions about the investment that is needed, the investment that's needed here and now. We are at the bottom three in the EU for share of energy use coming from renewables. It doesn't go unnoticed that the climate plan pushes, pushes all the hard work down the road, ensuring that all the heavy lifting is beyond the lifetime of this government. Even the lower targets government have set themselves have not been met. This is because too many people are being left out. The government's retrofit scheme does not work for most people. Social Justice Ireland have argued the scheme is deeply regressive. Last winter, one in three people in the state experienced energy poverty. The extent of energy deprivation is often hidden. We, do, we just don't know how many people don't turn on the heat because they fear that they can't afford it. Still, the government prioritises those with the greatest means over those in the greatest need. So a wealthy householder can access 25,000 of taxpayer-funded grants for a deep ret retrofit. Many with far greater need cannot access basic measures such as an attic or wall insulation. At the same time, they are punishing people that rely on solid fuel or heat for heat. Households that are often cold, rural homes with high emissions. We need to help households to move away from solid fuels rather than just penalise them. That is why Sinn Féin would introduce a specific scheme for households relying on solid fuel. The only way to meet retrofitting targets is to reform the unfair system and to ramp up investment. Sinn Féin would allocate an additional 182.5 million for residential and community retrofits and solar under the Department of Environment. The government's increased funding of 24 million in the face of a climate emergency is totally inadequate. In addition, we provided an for an additional 45 million for retrofits and solar under the Department of Housing. Sinn Féin would have allocated over half a billion in additional spending to climate-related policies. We would double the funding for the PV, PV scheme, as well as put solar panels on every school. There's no other country with the same nature as Ireland. Our biodiversity is unique. We need to protect and enhance our biodiversity for future generations and only 2% of our land is covered by native woodland. Sadly, there is nothing in this budget that reflects the scale of the emergency. With the right policies, this can be restored. The Citizens' Assembly on Biodiversity stated, the ambition of the state needs to be significantly increased to reflect the scale of Ireland's biodiversity crisis. This budget does not do that. They go on to say, this is likely to require substantial and sustained increase in expenditure, which should be made available immediately and guaranteed in the long term. We would invest 75.5 million in biodiversity, establishing a 50 million voluntary nature restoration fund. Investing in public transport is vital if we want to cut our emissions. Sinn Féin recognises projects such as the Western Rail Corridor and the Navan Rail Link Line, amongst others, are not an optional extra. The government should make the 20% fare reduction and the 50% fare reduction for young people and students permanent. That absolutely needs to be permanent if you're serious about climate change. This is not the fault of people that live in rural areas that they don't have a public transport option. They should not be punished for the government failures to provide them with public transport. This should be done alongside a ramp up in spending on the Connecting Ireland Rural Bus Scheme, giving people alternatives and making a lasting uh, difference in their lives. The just transition must be for individuals, for communities and for, for regions. But for far too long, areas in certain regions have been falling further and further behind. It is vital that we begin to really invest in infrastructure in the regions and the rural areas. We, it was mentioned in your speeches that you know, we'd wait for an e another economic downturn, and we have a fund for an economic downturn. But we cannot wait in the West and the Northwest to invest in infrastructure in that way, not only as part of a fair and just transition, but also to undo, undo the years of underinvestment. This looks like yet another budget that will not reduce regional inequality. I'm greatly concerned that the expenditure is not even being assessed in terms of regional inequality. 
GDP of the North West has fallen 11% further below the EU average since Fine Gael came into power. The gap between incomes in the North West and the rest of the state is now three times higher than it was when you took over a decade ago. EU Regional Competitiveness Index shows the scale of the infrastructure deficit in the North West. Out of the 234 regions across the EU, the North West ranks 218th for infrastructure. That places the region in the bottom 7% alongside some of the poorest regions in the EU. This government has no plan and no vision for rural Ireland, the West or the North West. This is evident in their unwillingness to commit to road and, road and rail in investment. It is evident in the lack of ambition for grid infrastructure for green energy. The region urgently needs roads and rail infrastructure, including the N17 and the Western Rail Corridor, as well as substantial investment in Knock Airport and in our regional airports. A grid capable of maximising the opportunities presented to a renewable offshore energy along the Western seaboard. We have the expertise, we have the determination, and we have the local leadership to deliver on the promise of the Atlantic Economic Corridor. To do this, the West and the North West needs an infrastructure stimulus package. We didn't see it in this budget. What is good for the North West is good for the state as a whole. Pressure needs to be taken off the bigger urban centres. When we look at agriculture, we need to support family farms and fishing communities to enable that they are sustainable and financially viable. We are asking more and more from farmers in terms of climate and food security. Farmers and fishermen want a government that will work with them, not against them. Sinn Féin have long called for the increased payments for, for, of 20 euro for yews and far greater support for suckler cows. We would like to have seen a 300 euro per cow. I am concerned to see only 33 million in additional core funding to cover the new measures and we'll need to see those obviously in detail. When we look at justice, we, the increase in the trainee guard allowance is the right decision, as Sinn Féin outlined in our alternative budget, when we call for the allowance to be doubled. This is finally a step in the right direction. It should never have taken this long to begin addressing the recruitment uh, challenges. After 12 years of Fine Gael in charge of justice, there is a crisis in policing. This hasn't just happened. It's been allowed to become worse year on year. Fianna Fáil started closing the Garda stations and Fine Gael just carried on. There are fewer Garda and Garda stations now than there were before either of them took over the last government. People have a right to feel safe in their homes, on the streets and in their communities. Twelve years of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil in the Department of Justice has done real harm to our justice system. Our defence forces are at a critical juncture Due to the failures of successive Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael governments, there is a significant retention and recruitment crisis. In each year that you have been in office, more people have left the Defence Forces than joined. The Commission on the Defence Forces set out a need for additional capital expenditure of 250 million in 2020 figures each year for 10 years. Last year you missed the target by 70 million. You missed, you missed by 70 million again today. The single most important thing that can be done to address the retention and the recruitment price crisis is the application of the working time directive to the defence forces. But this budget makes no provision to either collect the data necessary or to implement the directive next year. Sinn Féin wants to build our defence forces so that they can protect the Irish neutrality and, so and sovereignty. That won't happen without investment, and clearly it won't happen without Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. Then we turn to Irish unity. It seems like that everyone is preparing for the reunification of our country, except the government. The budget again allocates no money for the preparation for reunification. We've seen the success of citizens' assemblies in addressing the big challenges and opportunities this state is faced with. Setting up a citizens' assembly to look at all aspects of Irish unity is a no-brainer. So to present a budget without provision for a citizens' assembly demonstrates just how far this government is removed 
from people and communities that want an opportunity to actively prepare. While this government remains in power, it's up to the rest of us. Academia, civil society, sports organisations and business communities, the wider public and the diaspora. So to push forward with preparing for the challenges and opportunities. We need to allocate dedicated research funding to empower people at all levels to continue this work. To begin imagining what a new Ireland can look like. What an Ireland without Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael can look like. Yeah. And everyone has their part to play in this. No part is too great or too small. No one is too old or too young. People will see that the government has again failed to play its part in this budget. Yes, some people have been given back some of their own hard-earned money. We see people who have benefited at the cost of people who haven't. But too much of people's money continues to be squandered. Too much of hard-earned people's money continues to be wasted. Too much has been spent on layers and layers of bureaucracy. Too much has been spent without ever, ever measuring the outcomes or evaluating where people's hard-earned money goes. Minister and spokesperson, persons, week after week, stand up in this stall and they, their excuse for everything is we have allocated this or we've allocated that without ever measuring. Does the money, for instance, that is allocated for disability, does it get to the children with disabilities? Does it get to the parents of, dis with, of children with disabilities? Does it get to the carers who are caring? Does it get to the people who are breaking their backs trying to keep this country going along? And it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because this government doesn't care. I know that you want to continue business as usual. But the fact is, and the fact that everybody can see here today is, the longer this government are in power, the worse things people get for them and for their families. Thank you. Thank you.